Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Rossini's Il Barbiere di Siviglia, which I saw at the Comische Oper Berlin. The conductor was Antonello Maracorda. The production, set designs, and costumes were done by Kirill Serebrenikov and Alexia Tregobov. The videographer was Ilya Shagalov. The dramaturgy was handled by Johanna Val. The chorus master was David Cabellos, and the lights were handled by Diego Leitz. When I first saw the trailer to this particular production, I was extremely mixed in a pretty negative way. I was both very skeptical and some of my feelings were gearing towards, oh dear, this looks rather appalling. And yes, there were a lot of things that annoyed me about this production, like how trendy it tries to be with all of the references to social media, like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and how much it panders to people trying to be as trendy as possible, but there were certain things about this production that were rather hilarious and garnered some laughs out of me. And yes, I know that there are people who love traditional productions that will be out for my blood, but it's true, there were definitely things that I did enjoy about this production. I really enjoy the fact that we really get to see all the characters that were from the beginning of the opera basically contributing until the end of the opera. Like for example, Fiorello in a lot of the traditional productions tends to leave the stage after his first and only act and scene. But here, even though he doesn't sing, he basically contributes the plot. Same thing with the officer. Yes, he only appears in like the second act, but he continues to contribute a little bit more to what the plot offers in this entire opera. And I did enjoy some of the humor being used and a lot of referential humor, even though some of the trendiness can be rather egregious. I also like the fact that a lot of the characters' costumes were quite lovely to look at. Like first, we had Alma Viva dressed up as this punkish looking pop star, and then his second disguise was that of a refugee soldier, and his third disguise was basically a Conchita Wurst inspired type of costume. And finally, we get to see him in all his spiffy glory in the final moments of the opera, where he ends up marrying Rosina. Yes, there were certain things that dragged this production, like a little bit of the organ grinder music, and there were definitely some moments where there was a little bit of an awkward silence, but I guess it's also used to establish certain silent moments so that it won't end up being too rushed, but even then, it was still okay. Not the best, nor the worst production I've seen. It's meh. Nah. Overall, I did have some really mixed feelings about this production, but it's not the worst nor the best thing I've ever seen. It's just in the middle. And the costumes were quite interesting to look at as well. I especially love Berta's fat suit costume, and it really does pose a challenge on the singer of tonight, Yulia Gibu, I'll get to her later, and just how much she had to move in that suit and she pulled it off really well. So overall, despite my really, really mixed feelings for the overall production, almost leading towards I almost don't care about it, the costumes were quite interesting to look at, and there were some elements of the overall production that were quite fun in their own special way. And I did have a little bit of fun from this entire production. I enjoyed it. And now we get to the singers. Starting off with our titular barber, Figaro, sung by Dominic Kuninga. Now, he does have a very fine voice. I also saw him three months ago singing the baritone version of Hoffman, and he was definitely a very fine singer, and he made a pretty good first impression with that role. And while I love his meticulousness on the text, and while I love his exuberance from time to time, 
I'm constantly reminded of all the other great baritones who have attempted Figaro, the likes of Ricardo Stacciari, Cheryl Mills, Thomas Hampson, Sir Thomas Allen, and even Tito Gobbi and Ettore Bastianini, just to name a few of the great Figaro's of the past. He was good in his own special way. He entered the stage, well, technically on the balcony where he had to move around each of the seats. And yes, it did take a toll on how he attacked certain high notes, but this is definitely a very challenging sing. And yes, some of his high notes, specifically his A, sounded a little bit strangled, but I still have to give him credit for his overall meticulousness and for exuding some exuberance into this character. The only thing I was sort of missing with Dominic Kuninger's portrayal of Figaro was that even though he sang Largo al Factorum rather well, I'm sort of missing the playfulness. I'm sort of missing the playfulness of the vocal lines and even the overall character. I just missed that. Thank goodness we had the likes of Cheryl Milnes and even Ricardo Stacciari and Apollo Granforte who did exude amount of playfulness with this iconic character. But despite some of those caveats, I still think he's a very fine musician. I'm sure that he's quite young and I'm sure that he will definitely be better in the next few years. Singing our Count, Almaviva, was Panzer Aksaibek. Over the past few months, I have seen this gentleman perform in some character roles and some pretty small roles in the Wagnerian operas. And here he was taking on Almaviva. And wow, this gentleman sang the heck out of this role. Even when the director told him that he should sing in a pop singer sort of way when he serenades Rosina, I still felt like he was able to really do anything and everything with his voice, even when he sang in a sort of pop singer type of way. You could definitely tell that this is a gentleman who has a very, very bright future. I would really love to see this gentleman in more bel canto roles and even some French roles. I would love to see this gentleman attempt roles like Romeo, Le Prince Leopold from La Juive, Rimbaud from Robert le Diable, Idreno from Semiramide, Rodi from Guillaume Tell, Tonio from La Fille du Regiment, and even Ernesto from Don Pasquale and Nemorino from Le Lesir d'Amore. Heck, who knows? Maybe in a few years' time, he'll probably be singing roles like The Duke from Rigoletto and Alfredo Jamon from La Traviata, and I'm sure that he's already sung Fenton from Falstaff. Who knows? The possibilities for this young tenor are extremely endless. He really used that superb light lyric tenor instrument in such an awesome way. He let everything in, and I really love that he was able to conclude Eco Ridente il Cielo with a high C. Definitely a great highlight for him, and he was just able to have fun with this character. But more than anything, his vocal assets were at its prime. Even though he's quite young, being in his late 20s, early 30s, he has a very, very bright future. I would love to see this gentleman perform in a lot more roles in the bel canto repertoire and maybe in the French repertoire. Heck, he should do a lot more roles in the romantic genre in general because he has a very pliable voice that is able to sing all the coloratura and all of those florid lines wonderfully without breaking a sweat. He definitely knew how to use his voice with such agility and charm, and he was also extremely charming on stage. This is a gentleman I would really love to look forward to in a lot of his future roles. Then we go to Rosina, sung by Nicole Chevalier, who I also saw a few months ago singing all the Hoffman heroines. Compared to a lot of the lighter Rosinas I'm really used to listening to, like Roberta Peters, Rita Streich, 
and even Edita Gruberova because of her explosive high notes, her voice is richer and creamier compared to those lighter sopranos. But at the same time, she manages to attack all the coloratura in a very solid manner, and she really knew how to portray glamour wonderfully on stage. She was able to make Rosina a perfect balance between ladylike and extremely feisty. She didn't make Rosina too much of a girly girl, nor did she make Rosina too much of a tomboy. She had the perfect balance of how to make Rosina a character in of herself, and I especially loved how she was able to conclude Contro un cor with a high D. She really knew how to use that voice wonderfully, and she was able to really sing all those coloratura wonderfully as well. Yes, I would have preferred a lighter voice. Any voice who sung the likes of Gilda, Serbinetta, Zdenka, and maybe to even some extent Pamina, Melisande, and even the likes of Violetta Valeri. Heck, even a voice that could sing Oscar and Blonde, that would have been my ideal voice for any soprano Rosina. But as for Nicole Chevalier, she's a very, very solid musician and a very engaging actress. I also noticed that she added a lot of mannerisms to this role, making her voice sound lighter and giving into the sort of Sprechstimme with her voice. I thought she was able to pull off this role in a very solid manner, and I still have to give my hat off to her for being such a very great musician in her own special way. Then we go to Dr. Bartolo, sung by Philip Meyerhofer, who was, according to the audience reception, the major star of tonight's opera production. He really knew how to manipulate that basso voice, and he just gave a lot of color to this voice, especially with his major aria, Au Dottor de la Mia Sorte. He sang mellifluously, really giving off such excellent musicianship, and he was a very involving actor. He was not only a very, very excellent singer, but he was also a very fun actor to watch on stage. You can't help but feel this immersed every time this character manages to get himself into certain misfortunes or even when he tries to make moves on Rosina and just a lot of things in general. He was definitely the star of the evening in terms of the audience reception. Heck, when he entered for his curtain call, the audience definitely went pretty wild for the singer, and with good reason. He's a very great singer. He really knew how to handle the patter singing in a very solid manner, even though he wasn't really Fernando Corena or Claudio Desderi material. He was still able to handle the patter singing in such a very solid manner. Then we have Don Basilio, sung by Tarek Nazmi. He was just wonderful in this role, vocally and theatrically. He was able to make his voice bloom, and that just shows you how much of a bright future this young basso has. He can make his voice bloom, and he can really let his voice sweep with such great sound and he let everything in. He was a very committed musician, and he was also a pretty committed actor. Yes, his portrayal of Don Basilio is a lot younger than what a lot of people expect, because traditionally Don Basilio is made to look a lot older than the other characters, maybe even, um, maybe even Dr. Bartolo's age, or maybe slightly older or younger than him, though in that age range. But he was still able to pull off such a great amount of grace and dignity to this role, and he was able to just make him naturally funny. But his vocal assets were at the top game. He used that superb basso voice wonderfully, and he definitely has a very bright future in the basso cantante repertoire. Julia Giebel as Berta was an absolute riot. 
Yes, I would have preferred a lyric mezzo singing this role, seeing that Julia Giebel is a lyric coloratura soprano who also specializes a great deal in the lighter repertoire. But her musicianship and the way she was singing was just awesome. And it makes me think that she could have also taken Rosina herself as well. She has a very gorgeous voice. Her high notes were absolutely scintillating and sparkling. And her voice was really dainty all throughout. And she had a very fine stage presence. She was able to make the best out of this character role. And when she sang her solo, Il Vecchiotto Cerca o Moglie, she let it all out with such finesse, charm, and agility. She sang the hell out of that aria. She was able to give off such scintillating vocal lines and even an interpolated high E, which she sang with such clarion power, yet all the grace and agility of an Olympic gymnast. And it makes me wonder, maybe next time she could definitely do the role of Rosina in the near future. I don't know if she's considered looking into this role and maybe she might have sung some arias, specifically Una Voce Poco Fa in concerts, but this might be definitely worth a try in the near future. Who knows? She definitely has a bright future in the lyric coloratura soprano repertoire. And who knows? She might even make it as Marie from La Fille du Regiment, Norina from Don Pasquale, Gilda from Rigoletto, and a lot of the other classic roles for a lyric coloratura soprano. Heck, even Ophelia from Hamlet and Philine from Mignon. And we even have the pleasure of having some really wonderful performances from the small roles of Fiorello and the Officer, sung by Denis Milo and Thomas Seifert. And even though Thomas Seifert's vibrato was kind of wide, he still has pretty good musicians. So overall, the singing was absolutely well done. And in my opinion, the absolute standouts were Tanzel Aksaibek's superbly sung Conte la Maviva, and of course, Philip Meyerhofer superbly sung and acted Dr. Bartolo. The conducting was really solid, as done by Maestro Antonello Manacor. 